Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to give a talk. So this is a collaboration. Uh, so there are, we are half theorists, half experimentalists. So in the theory part, there is Julien Barré. He's here, you know him. And Alain Olivetti, which is a former student of Julien. And on the experimental part, there is David Wilkowski, which who, who was before in in Nice, now it's in Singapore, and Marivon Chaloni, who did uh, the experiment I will explain just now, which, 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 uh, who was the former student of, uh, of David. So, the, so my talk, it's divided in two parts. First, I will explain an experiment which has already been done in, in which it involves one-dimensional pseudo-gravity. So called an experiment of cold atoms which mimics one dimensional gravity. And then I will explain a uh, project or an experimental proposal for, a, a, for an experiment of cold atoms which mimics two dimensional gravity. So, uh, so the motivation of doing that, so I think we are here, everybody, in, in, a, in a long range conference. So we know which is the which are the main motivations. So there are many systems, as for example Julian explained, which presents long-range interactions. And cold atoms are experimental systems which permits to manipulate such long-range systems doing experiments and playing, for example, with the parameters and also looking at the dynamics. For example, when you look at galaxy, the galaxy, the time scales which are involved in a, in a galaxy are very, very long, so you don't see the dynamics. So here you can see the dynamics. And also, there is a new ingredient here in the second part of the talk. Uh, we will see that there, that there are forces which do not derive from a potential. So that's interesting from the, uh, for the statistical mechanics of such system as they are not well understood, and there are other fields in which they have this kind of, of, uh, of forces. For example, in self-propelled particles, they have the, it's very similar. When you look at the equations, they are very, equations are extremely similar. So I will start to explain the, this experiment which has already been done, and then we'll explain to you the, the basics of, uh, of how works uh, this cold atoms experiments. So what we use is what we, it's called a far of resonance magneto-optic trap. So uh, there is uh, uh, the trapping of the, here is the, is the, the, the atoms are here, and they are trapped with a single focused laser, which is here, this laser. And this, this laser induces a dipole in the atoms and because of the dipoles, they induce a, uh, a potential, which uh, which is proportional to the intensity of this uh, of this uh, of the laser beam, and this uh, this potential is more or less harmonic. And in the experiment that has been done, uh, it has been measured in this uh, in this longitudinal direction, uh, this frequency of the of the harmonic potential, and uh, this frequency in the other uh, direction. So this, 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 the cloud of the at of the of the atoms are more or less one-dimensional. It's more or less one-dimensional. So, okay. So this is a cold atom experiment. So there is a mechanism in order to cool the atoms, and it's, it's done by Doppler effect. So uh, the force of an atom is the sum of this f plus of f minus, which are which is this expression. This is a semi-classical formula to, to compute the interaction between the lasers and the, and the atoms. And what is important in this formula here for us are the terms which are in red. So this term is the intensity of the laser which decreases when, when, the, when the photons enter, in the, of course, in the, in, the, in the cloud. Here is the velocity of the atoms. And delta is the frequency detuning between the 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 levels of the of the of the energy levels of the atom at rest and the lasers, and so playing with uh, with this delta, if you if you if we, we plot here in the next slide, I will plot f as a function uh, as a function of the velocity for detuning, which is negative. 
you see that there's the force, okay, here are the units, I, I don't, I'm not using uh, physical units, the force is, uh, has this, this, this shape. So you see that for particles we have positive velocity, the force is negative, so it means that they are cool. So the, there is a force in the opposite direction of the velocity. And when the velocity is, when the particle is going in, with has negative velocity is going in another direction, the force is positive. So the, it's also against the, the it's in the, in the opposite direction of the velocity of the particles. So this is the mechanism of, the, of, the, of cooling in this kind of experiments. So uh, now, okay, we have the experiment is very complicated, and now what the physics is quite complicated, and now the idea is to uh, to take the main physical to understand what are the main, the main physical forces which are which act over the atoms. So I already um, uh, spoke about the, the confining force of the traps. So this this uh, this uh, uh, with this uh, with this force, the, the the atoms remain confined. And there is another, another force which is called the shadow effect. And what uh, the idea is the following. So imagine that you have here one laser. OK, I didn't tell you about, I just tell you about the, the laser which are trapping. But there are two other lasers which are uh, this one, which is going this direction, and this one with exactly the same uh, with the same frequency, which is going in the other direction, so they are counter-propagating lasers. And so here we have one laser, we have another laser. So what happens when? So imagine here we have two atoms. So imagine that there is a photon which hits this, uh, which is captured by this by this atom. So this, uh, so what will happen? So after a while, this uh, this uh, the photon will be remitted. So if it's a, a spontaneous emission, it will be in some random direction. So there is only one, OK? And probably it will be interact with another, another, uh, another atom. So the, this, this spontaneous emission causes an effective force, which is uh, Coulomb. It's repulsive. This one is repulsive. It's uh, an effective potential V of R, 1 over R. As, uh, Julien explained in his talk. So this is the second force I have here. This is the multiple diffusion from spontaneous emission. This is a repulsive column-like uh, because to multiply diffusion. Okay. So what's this? Uh, this force is very important in three dimensions, but it's not important in one and two dimension because uh, when you have a uh, this geometry, the photons can escape very easily, so the probability to interact with another atom is very low. And the, another, and the, and the other force is what he calls the shadow effect. So if, uh, imagine I have one atom here and another atom exactly aligned with the laser, if this atom has, uh, has um, interact with this photon, of course, this atom will not interact with this photon, okay? So because of the transfer momentum, this atom is kicked, so there's a kick in this direction, and okay, that's what's happened physically. So now imagine that I forget that there is the lasers, and I see what happens. So if I look what what is happening here, you will say, ah, okay, what's happening is this an, an attractive force between these two atoms. Okay, this is an, an effective attractive force between the atoms, and it is what is called the shadow effect. It's just there is a screening of uh, the, this atom is, is screening the lasers, and then it's, it will be, this atom will be interacted with these lasers, with this laser, and then there will be this, this, this effective attractive force. Okay. So okay, I will not enter too much in uh, mathematical details and how we we model this uh, this system, but it's. It seems it's reasonable to, 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 to work with the, because the system is, is long range with lots of equation and uh, uh, with, uh, with some noise because of the lasers. Okay, the lasers uh, give, put energy in the system. And there is also a, here hidden, there is also a friction because the force here depends on the velocity. 
So in order to, to so in the experiment, so when the, the atoms are loaded in the trap, and after a while they will arrive to a, to a, uh, uh, to a stationary distribution. So uh, one way to, the way to compute uh, the stationary distribution is to assume that the distribution, the distribution function uh, is separable. So it depends on a function which depends on the position multiplied by the function which depends on the velocity. So if you do that, and you assume also that uh, the optical depth is small, the optical depth is uh, a measure of the, uh, he, here you have the, your cloth, is how depth the photons can enter in the, in the, in the system, so how, how transparent it is. So if the system is very transparent, you can expand in, in uh, the exponential. Here we have an exponential in this formula. So you can expand here for small b, and you get like that. So in the experiment, b was around 0 0.5. But here, this is the density. So the density is normalized to 1. So this, this is at most 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So it is a more reasonable approximation. And when you do, OK, I, don't, I will not detail too much the mathematics here, but the details. But you have two characteristic scales. One which is related with the with the trap, and the other and the other one with the characteristic interaction. Then we are able to compute uh, with uh, with uh, with different uh, scales in the system their value, and then you obtain this uh, this equation, which is exactly the same equation for the stationary solution of a self rotating gas in one dimension. So this is. Uh, this is the this is a function sine because in one dimension the force between in one dimensional gravity the force between two uh, two particles is just the sine. Okay, the potential is for one d gravity the potential v of x is proportional to x. Okay. And so this. This equation has this, a very well-known solution, which is a solution of the stationary solution for 1D gravity with this, this sec square function. OK. So this is the theoretical part. So that's relatively easy. Now the, per the experiment has been done. And now the point is to see if really what we have in the system is if this model is valid and we have really in the system uh, an effective interaction, which is uh, equivalent to 1D gravity. So how can we look at to, to, convince, to convince ourselves that that is the case? So we can look at the scaling of the size of the system with the number of atoms. So if, there is a, if the interaction is attractive, and when you increase more and more the number of, of, of atoms, the system size will, be, will get smaller and smaller. We can see also the, long, the density profile, if the density profile coincides with the one that I just brought before. And we also look, can look at the breathing oscillation. So you have the system, which is stationary. So you change a little bit the intensity of the laser, so you perturb it, and then it will, try, it will, it will start to breathe. And this uh, frequency of, this, of the oscillations is related with, uh, uh, with, uh, for, a, uh, for a pair force, which is uh, uh, which is a power law, it's related with, uh, with this exponent. Okay, so we expect to, to see a alpha equal to zero if it's a 1D gravity. So this is uh, the experiment. This is, uh, this is the longitudinal size as a function of time. So here in this, this, blue, this blue curve, it's with the intensity of the lasers equal to zero. So there is only the trap. And so what happens, so it starts to oscillate, and then so the oscillation stops. And I th think that the main mechanism here is just that the trap is not totally harmonic, so it relaxes because of the unharmonicity. And here there are two other cases. Here the intensity of the lasers is different from zero, and this one is larger. So we see that, of 
curve, it oscillates, but it's, uh, it's getting, uh, the, the size is much smaller than, of course, in the, in the case in which there is, no, uh, there is no interaction. And where the intensity is larger, uh, is larger even larger, so I, I remember you that the strength of interaction depends on the intensity of the lasers. So it's here. This is the intensity of the laser, so when the intensity is larger, the force is larger, it's expected to be larger. So here, the system is smaller, even smaller. Okay. So this is a measurement of the size of the system, the inverse size of the system as a function of the number of particles. So, uh, and we expect that this, this function will increase with n, as n. We, we, cannot, we don't know the prefactor, but we know that it, it, if it's long range, it will increase with n. And we see that this is for the two intensities I, of the laser I showed you before. We see that this is the case. Another measurement, it's possible to do an experiment, is the equilibrium profile. So this is the measure the equilibrium profile in the, in the experiment. And this is a fit for, uh, uh, for the equilibrium distribution corresponding to different, uh, so this is a one, to different uh, interactions, uh, polar interactions, okay? And for gravity, of course, it should alpha is zero. So we see it here that the, okay, the minus one is clearly excluded, and between alpha equal to zero, which is absolute gravity, and alpha equal to one half, we are more or less, well, alpha equal to zero is a little, slightly better, half equal to one half, it's also compatible. And there are the measurements for the breathing oscillations. So here, so, okay, this is the formula, so I showed you before, alpha is the, um, is the exponent of the pair interaction, and p is the amplitude of the perturbation. So this is a, a plot of p as a function of the frequency of the breathing oscillation. And so there are the, the, the fits which corresponds to alpha equal to zero. This one corresponds to alpha equal to one. This one corresponds to alpha equal to two. And we see that the best fit is alpha equal to one. And okay, alpha uh, equal to zero, sorry. And alpha equal to one is also possible, but it's a worse fit. So the conclusion is we have a quite strong uh, uh, strong indication that what the, the effective interaction there is in the system is, is uh, a pseudo one dimensional gravity. So, this is for this is the first part of the talk, <coughs> which is the experiment which has already been done. And then, uh, this is a thing but in two dimensions. So uh, the interest of that is that in one di for gravity in one dimension, there is no uh, phase transition. But for gravity in two dimensions, there are a phase transition. So if you go to a, a temperature which is sufficiently small, in a, uh, when you have your system in, in a confining potential, there is a collapse. Okay? And in 1D, there is no collapse. There is no phase transition. So this is interesting to see phase transitions in, in, the, in experiments. Also, uh, like in 1D, the, the photons, the scattering photons of, uh, escape on the transverse direction, so there is a negligible repulsive force. Also, we expect that the attractive force will be the most important. And in addition here, uh, the effective uh, force between the atoms does not derive from a potential. So it means that uh, the divergence of the force is, uh, is still follows the Poisson equation, but there is uh, a, a rotational term, which is different from zero. So this is here, uh, you will see that there are uh, theoretical, quite a lot of theoretical difficulties. And this has been published in, in this work in parallel. So the idea is, so the, the experimental setup is more or less the same than the previous one. So instead of, ha of having only two lasers, we have uh, four lasers. And uh, this is a tropic beam, which makes the, the, which makes the 
the, the distribution of atoms uh, quasi two dimensional. And the force of the system, so the idea is the same kind of calculations than before. You have uh, uh, the force in the, so now we have, we have the system is two dimensional. So imagine that here we have the x direction, the y direction, so we have one laser here, we have another here, another here, another here. So the, the shadow force, how it works, so imagine that you have one atom here and you have one, another atom aligned with the first one. So this, this atom will not see this laser, so there will be an effective force between the two, like that. So this is true in this direction, but also if there is another atom here, which is screening, uh, the, uh, the, this one is screening this one to this laser, then there will be an effective gravitational, pseudo-gravitational force like that. But it is not, it does not correspond to gravity, to true gravity in two dimensions. It's, it's two times gravity in one dimension because uh, the, this force is like that, it's also with a sign, but the force, the, the, the gravity in two dimensions, the potential is V of R is proportional to log of R. So if you want to do this, this kind of, to achieve this kind of interactions with, uh, in a, with uh, this kind of experiment, you can do it. It's, you have to put an infinite number of lasers like that. So you can see quite easily that in the limit of an infinite number of lasers, this, the, if the potential is, the effective potential is like that. And, um, and so it derives from a potential, the force derives from a potential, but it's, I think it's quite expensive. So this is, there are the, the, the more is the same equations, is that the same equations than before, but with another dimension. And um, we expect that the uh, dynamics to be overdone, so instead of using the Vlasov equation, you can use the Smoluchowski equation, which is, uh, which is this one. So here there is a force, this is the mean field force, this is the temperature, this is an equation for the density. So this part corresponds to the, to the pseudo two-dimensional force, gravitational force. This one is the, the, the trap, and this one is the diffusion. So what's nice here is we have only one uh, important parameter that, so if you rescale here time and space, you see that this equation depends only on one parameter that we call here theta, it's kind of temperature. So, okay, what's the difficulty now? So imagine that you have a force with the pond, with the pond from, of which derives, which comes from, with, which is a gradient of some potential. So the question, the Smoluchowski equation, the question I wrote before, you can write it in this way, you can write it like uh, the diversion of the flux, and the flux is, uh, is uh, this, uh, this expression. And here, okay, for simplicity, I, I, I neglect the trap. So how do you, how can we compute the equilibrium solution of this equation? So that's simple. Uh, if the force derived from, the, from a potential, you, you, you write F equal to minus uh, the, uh, the gradient of U, and you look for a solution in which this, the equilibrium solution for the density is exponential minus beta, uh, uh, the, the mean field potential, uh, and when you, you have to compute, but just technical problem, but you have just Technically simple, you should just to compute the cell consistently the relationship between the U and the density. And then directly, that's just because uh, you, you put this answers in the equation, you obtain that theta is equal to beta equal to minus one, uh, equal to beta to uh, one over beta, and you see that the flux is zero. So in order to have here a stationary solution, what's, uh, what's important is that the derivative rho with t to be zero, but here, and so it's that it's sufficient that the divergence of the flux to be zero, but in this case, when the force derived from a potential, we see that the flux itself is zero. So what happens now with a, a force which does not derive from a potential? So if you try to do the same thing, uh, it's impossible. You will not achieve to do that. 
if you write, because now the force is the gradient of the, uh, some potential, the midfield force plus one, one, uh, one part which is, which is divergence, uh, which is not divergent less. And then, you, for example, you, can, you try to put this in some way in this equation, you can to look for an answer, so that's, it does not work. And, this, uh, and you will see why it does not work. When, uh, we will comp I will show you the numerical solutions of this kind of, of system, and you will see that it's not strange and not to have simple analytical uh, uh, computation of it. So what can we do theoretically? So theoretically, we cannot do too much, but we can try to estimate at least a bound of the phase transition. So if you compute this quantity, S of t, which is the integral of rho log of rho, and you compute the derivative of S, and you use the Smoluchowski equation, you get this equation. And then you can, you can using this, uh, this inequality, this functional inequality, you can relate this term with this one. And so you obtain this equation. So in order to have a collapse, uh, if S point, S has to go to minus infinity, and we see that this is only possible if uh, here this term is negative, and then it's only possible with theta smaller than 0 0.17. Okay, so it's not saying, this, this inequality is not saying that there is a, a, a collapse for this effect, for this reduced temperature, but that it could be a collapse for this reduced temperature. So let's see, okay, first of all, I can see you a simulation. So the simulation we have done, we have discretized the Smoluchowski equation, and we have used and body simulation, molecular dynamic simulation. So you st we start from some initial condition. And uh, what the system looks like, it looks like this, like that. This can, it forms this kind of structure with a cross. Okay. And OK, this is, uh, we will see that there is a, a a phase transition, or what we think there is a phase transition, and here we are quite close to the to the phase to this phase transition. I can show you two different snapshots. This snapshot corresponds to the simulation I just show you, and this one is at higher temperature. And if you go to higher and higher temperature, the system gets more and more isotropic. Okay, so. Uh, the idea here is to try to identify if there is a phase transition or not. So here we have measured the, the density at the origin, so the density here in the, at the center of the system, or it's here around the center of the system. And we see that for temp quite large temperatures, so the, there is, there is, it's more or less a constant. So here this is in, in log uh, linear scale, here it's in linear linear scale, so here it's more or less a constant. And it arrives some point which is between 0 .0 0.12 more or less, or 0.15, in which there is, it increases a lot. And here, so we estimate that this the transition here in this region. And here, there's two kind of points. Uh, the black points are points in which with the simulations we trust in the simulations. And the white points we don't trust in the simulation because when you have a collapse to something which with a density which goes to infinity, that's not possible to simulate. So in this region, if you if you if you do conversion tests, uh, decreasing more and more the, the time step in your simulations, you get different results. That is what you expect. It's also a sign of the of a phase transition. So what about the currents, the flux? I I tell you before. So we can do the same kind of things. So this is the, the, the flux which are in the system. So here we see that, that they, they are non-zero. So we see that the particles which are here, they, they, there is a flux of particles in this, towards the center here, and they escape along the diagonal here in, in this way. And this way here, and here they do the same, and here they do the same. 
And also, if you measure the, the average value of the flux as a function of theta, we see also the signature of the, of the phase transition. So here, it decreases quite a lot around the same value of theta. So this, so what, this summary of the talk, what I, I show you in an experiment which has already been done of things that mimics gravity in one dimension. We have also a, a project in, of experiment in two dimension, which is scheduled, so there is a PhD student working on it. A, so there are many, many theoretical things still we, uh, to do, which is the nature of phase transition, there is really a phase transition. Uh, what happens with, uh, if, if we use an underdamping dynamics? So here, the, 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 the phase space has only one dimension. But if, you, if the dynamics is not underdamping, we have, we have the friction and the dissipation for, for what happens in this, in this case, more general case. And just to say that I hope the experiment will be done soon. And estimating the, the regime of attainable with the, with the with, uh, with experiment, we are in the same regime that uh, we have modeled here in the, in the theory. Thank you.